Hey everybody, it's Aquila DeHaan and <laughs> that's my Instagram name. It's Aquila and this is a Lefty Knitter podcast. <sighs> I feel like my camera's not sideways. It's not tilting, but the timer's not. Take two. <laughs> hey, it's Aquila and this is a Lefty Knitter podcast and I'm coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland. You can find me on Instagram as Aquila DeHaan, and you can find me as a Lifting Knitter podcast now also, so go check that out. This is episode 57. 57, guys. My hair is just crazy. Ugh, I do it. I mess with it all the time, and it bothers me when I rewatch the videos to try to edit them, the little bit that I do edit, because uh, I normally don't mu edit much on these. <laughs> Yay. Okay. I'm just gonna dive in. I cast on the Sorel sweater. I told you guys I was gonna wind up the yarn at the end of the last episode, and I did. I wound it up. I did a little test swatch, gauge, whatever, gauge swatch. I was pretty close with, um, without blocking, of course. I don't think the mohair is going to stretch much. So even though the superwash wool will, I don't think the mohair will. So I am going with a size 42. Hi, bud. This is bud. And he gets annoying a lot. <laughs> He's like, nope, I don't want to be on the table. All right. Bye, bud. <laughs> Very angry. <laughs> Very angry cat. Speaking of cats, we were sitting outside the other day, minding our own business in our backyard, and I kept hearing, so we, we have a side door that goes to the kitchen. Kept hearing that door. And I thought, oh, is it the wind just kind of catching it? And I'm just hearing it go thump, thump, like thump a little. Hear it again, I hear it again. I hear it like three or four times, right? Finally, like, cause I'm sitting in a chair where I can see the door in our yard. And I hear it and I see a tail and I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. So I'm like, holy crap, one of our cats got up. Yep, Luna, our three-legged tripod kitty, decided she could push the door open because our latch had broken. So we didn't think our cats were gonna like try to get out, but yeah, totally got out. Now we do let her go out in the backyard. We have a harness and a leash and whatnot. <sighs> Freaking escape kitties, yeah. Okay, back to the Sorel sweater by Wool and Pine. I finally cast it on. My swatch was pretty good, like I said. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you could see me. Uh, I cast on size 42. It calls for four yarns, which I thought it was only three, but I think that I can make the fading work with just the three. That's what I'm going to do anyway. So I had gotten these from John two years ago for, he made an advent calendar and he bought these yarns. Now they're all nitpicks. All my three superwash yarns. I think they're all, all superwash. Oh, the three I'm using are. Why does he have to interrupt when he doesn't even know what I'm talking about? Welcome to my world. So these are all Nitpicks, Hawthorne, Fingering, but they're all a little different because one's a speckle, one's a tonal, and one is just the regular. So I have round them all up. They're super pretty. I'm starting with this one. I think this one being less busy, I mean being the most busy is gonna look kind of cool in that dip stitch that you use. I'm afraid if I use this down at the bottom end of the body, I don't want the busyness down there. I'd rather have this down at the bottom, so the colors are actually going to go like this. <clears throat> this one is the Tonal, Sweet Home Tonal. And it's 357 yards for 100 grams. Wow, that seems awfully thick for a fingering weight but whatever, for 100 grams. It's 80-20. Uh, Woodstock is, their skeins must be 
light or something. They're 100 grams though. Whatever. This is also an 80-20 and this one is called Woodstock. And then this is Andromeda, Andromeda Speckle and this is also an 80 It's all 80-20. It's the same base. Now I did some research on mohair and the best bang for my buck was with Fiber Nymph Dye Works and she was having some sort of sale that time, that time when I was buying it. So that's her label, Fiber Nymph Dye Works. She was doing some uh, tonal, like uh, one of a kind tonals, like she was doing one batch of them. And this is her floof base, which is 72 kid mohair, 28 silk for 459 yards. And this is this colorway soot tonal. So it's a gray. I've only gotten through um, two dip stitches. So I've done my castellan collar part. And then two dip stitches. Please don't mind all the extra background noise. This is this is just how it is. <sighs> There's no word from her school if they're closing. They're just asking us to let them know if they're going to be coming or not to be able to have adequate adults <laughs> and snacks. So that's all I know, and I haven't heard from my work yet. So here we go. It might be the start of teleworking. Two of my knit night group um, friends, they are already teleworking starting tomorrow. Um, we did set up Google Hangouts and made ourselves a knit group group on Google Hangouts so we can all be on there. We were testing it this morning, so that was really fun. The only thing with Google Hangouts, and I've only used Zoom very limitedly, to know the difference, but I think that's they worth they both work kind of the same way. When somebody is talking, that's the person whose video is prominent. I know you can change certain settings on depending on if your tablet on a phone or on a computer, a desktop or a PC or a laptop. Um, but you have to just be mindful. I know lots of virtual nights are going to be happening. I feel like if you have more than so many people, it's going to get very hard to actually have conversations with people. Um, I know we are not self-quarantined yet, but there's three counties in Pennsylvania that have already been self-quarantined by uh, mandated self-quarantines. They can only go to grocery stores and pharmacies, and that's the only places that are open. So, yeah. Um, I do believe that it's coming for everyone because Americans are pretty much like, we're going to go party for St. Patrick's Day. Sorry. Uh, we are doing some self-awareness, self-social, uh, what is it? Distancing is what they're calling it. We are definitely, um, doing that. Although we might go ride by the tennis court today to see <laughs> if there's anybody there and we might go play tennis if it's empty just to get out and get some exercise and we're gonna pack up her bike so she can ride around the court. <laughs> Cause some of the state parks are even closing. So I'm not quite sure how people are gonna get out unless you have your own land to go hiking on. Just to get some outside time. Luckily we have not like a great yard, but we have a yard with a playground with a play set in it. So we'll, we'll be okay in some aspects. <sighs> I gotta stop talking about it. it it's me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm excited about this. I'm definitely going to be doing more work on this today. Because the first chart is a lot of rows. And I'm only maybe mm, a eighth of the way through the chart. So it does look super cool though. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. I like it. All right. Till the next time. Hey everybody. It is day. It's day. <laughs> I keep reading all these posts about quarantine and people are saying day blah blah blah. It's Tuesday and it's the 18th. Um, 
this will be day four of me working from home and day three of Z being home. Now we chose to keep her home from her daycare, which is still open, but we um, decided since I'm working, oh, I didn't put my glasses on, that's why it looks so weird. I'm working from home. Um, it's been an adjustment, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but we're trying to keep to a schedule and Monday was really hard just trying to figure it all out. John even stayed home. I think that made it a little more like scrambled, you know? Um, but yesterday was really good. We kept to a schedule. We had breakfast, still got dressed, like we were gonna be leaving the house. Um, had snack time. She came in, we did uh, Scholastic online. It's like scholastic.com and you just search for the if they're advertising it as like home learning or whatever and it's free so I really highly suggest they have you go and you find the age of your child and they have like a book that's read to you they have a, a like a cartoon story they have a theme for the day like yesterday day one they we did day one yesterday and that was bunnies so she got to watch a little video that was kind of like National Geographic ish and it had lots of facts so it was very kid based you know for her age um, and then she got to do like a game after she watched the little video and there was like a quiz which it's good because you can push the little sound button and it reads the question to her and then gives her the answers in order like in order as they are on the screen so she did pretty good with that um not the greatest because she still can't fully read but she was understanding the concept of it so that was really good um of course everybody's posting oh home quarantine pick up a new hobby pick up you know do some read some books and this and that and i'm just like i'm quarantined but i'm working so that's like a, i shouldn't say it's a bummer because i'm really grateful that i still can work from home uh, but i want to knit more <laughs> i want to craft more um but at the same time i just no, I have to do what I have to do. The cat is scratching on the scratching post behind the camera. <sighs> so, um, lots of ums. <sighs> the last, so we kept to the schedule. I actually clocked out for lunch and Z and I, we had lunch. We went outside. We have, a, we're grateful that we have a little playground. So she swang on the swings. For a little bit and then we took a little stroll around the block and then when we came back in John's been home he comes home pretty much like mid-afternoon ish so we were he came home at that point but if not it would have been quiet time for her which is what she would have had at her school so we had set up she has a sleeping bag that has like an air mattress in it so we set that up and I said as long as you're resting you don't have to sleep because she doesn't sleep when she's at school either um, I'm okay with that just some quiet downtime and even after um, her and John came in they did she did lay down and had some quiet downtime which was good we've been um, doing virtual knit nights with my girl my my knit girls I had posted something on um, a lefty knitters Instagram about trying out zoom now i did create a room and the room i didn't post the room number and there is a password for it so um i'd like to still try that out because i wouldn't mind having um another virtual knit night with just some of the people that i'm friends with virtually you know some people i've met in person but um i think that would be nice um what's really nice is I can decompress a little with my knit group. Sorry, you can probably hear her playing her game on her tablet. Um, because it's been really trying and you need to really decompress. And I've been honestly just really tired at the end of the day that I barely get any knitting in. We watch like one show on TV and John and I are both pretty much ready for bed. Um, I do those color by numbers on my tablet and I love that and it's very like kind of mind numbing and 
decompressing. So I will show you the progress. I forgot to put progress keepers. I am terrible with that because I am not used to doing that. So I am decreasing now on that hat that I'm making with my hand spun. So I have this much left and I still have my little mini skein, which I think I'm gonna have to break into, which totally fine too. The rest of it will, like I said, will end up going in my blanket. But I am decreasing now on my hat. I just love that I didn't even notice this color change when I was like spinning it. So, yeah. So I'm doing the decreases there. That's where I'm at in that project. And then the Sorel sweater, I haven't gotten a whole lot done on that either. I've gotten some, um, just not a ton. I think I had only done one of the dip sections at that point, and I'm ready to do another, but I have done in, some in between. So I'm one, two, three. I've done f three dip stitches, sections. It's weird to explain. Sorry. So I'm ready to do the next line as a dip stitch row. So I'm ready to do that. And um, it's starting to grow a little bit because you're increasing at certain points. So it's really exciting. It's so soft and, um, sorry. There we go. Um, yeah. Oh, and it's the morning of Wednesday, just so you know. So I'm getting ready. I'm going to go make tea, get some food. She's already ate, but I want to get her dressed and whatnot. So get us ready for our day. <laughs> Maybe this will be um, worked on tonight because I f think I'm going to try to get a couple decrease rows done on this this morning before I actually log in. And... I'll have to switch soon because the 16 inch circulars aren't going to be, it's going to be too tight, but yeah, that's where I am. It's just been, as everybody probably feels, a roller coaster of all emotions, trying to adapt, trying to figure out, you don't know the, the outcome, like there's no known end date to any of this, so just being real. I'm sorry that it's kind of taken over a little and the knitting content isn't there as much. I could do it in a separate like daily vlog, but then I have to like edit that. <laughs> I already do this kind of as a daily when I get a minute to video. So if you've not watched before, if there's any new people that are watching, um, I do my videos through the week and then I put them all together and do, um, like a vlog style episode so yeah so hi to any new viewers <laughs> and you know hi to all my reoccurring and continuing and subscribed viewers so I appreciate that and I thank you very much and I hope everybody is keeping a level head and talking with their household and their friends and able to virtually decompress with maybe people um, it's helpful it's very it's, it's like therapy really at this point. So you need that. You need to be able to talk to, to someone who might not be, who you're not quarantined with in your house. So, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. All right, until the next clip, I'll see you guys. All right guys, it is now the week roundup and I have one finished object and only one other thing I've been working on. So that's the Sorel sweater and then of course, my green hat. Finished it. I think it looks pretty snazzy. Well, technically I haven't finished it, sorry, because I haven't woven in my hands and John would say that's not done, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not showing it again. So it's done. <laughs> All right, there it is. Oh, there's the end popping out. <clears throat> I'll pop it on. <laughs> Done. See you in a bit. 
You, yeah. Okay. Sorry. MJ was hanging out for just a moment. So John's outside with Z and they're putting new mulch in her playground. We figured we might as well just go get it and it'll give us a project to do. It needs to be cleaned out a little, but whatever. We are just very grateful that we have that since we think Sunday we might be going on house lockdown. We're not sure, not sure, but that is uh, what seems to be going around as the talk. So, all right, there's that. I don't know um, if I'm gonna keep this one or the other one. And I don't know who I'm gonna give the other one to. I'm not sure. I had this much left of my ball and then I still have this tiny little mini skein. So they might just end up in my blanket. I don't know, unless I used it like in one stripe of a hat. I don't know. All these yarns that I do put in my little, I have gallon Ziploc bags. I have three of them with all the scraps for my blanket. Sometimes I do pull from those scraps and do like a single stripe. Sometimes I use it to wrap like a gift. Sometimes I use it to hold stitches for my thumbs on my gloves that I made, um, or even, you know, the arm stitches on a sweater. Just saying. <laughs> I don't pull out, like, my box store acrylic yarn and do that, although I should, but, or keep, like, one little ball of that somewhere easily accessible. I don't know. Not that it's not easily accessible, because it's just in a bin right inside my basement door. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little froggy. Unless the needle just wants to pop out. I'm using my, um, oh my gosh, I forgot what they're called. I'll have to look it up and I'll tell you guys the next time. Um, I just did another increase on this. I haven't tried it on. Here's how much I have left of these two cakes. Um, compared to a regular sized cake, that's how much I've used. Wow, that looks terrible from being in the bag, but that's okay. It's just a cake of yarn. <clears throat> so if I look at the chart, which I'm not gonna show again, this is the Sorrel sweater. I just finished round 40 of 56 of the first chart, so I don't have much left to go. The second and third chart are much smaller. So I'm almost done. I'm not gonna lie. Um, the repetitiveness of this, because uh, it's pretty much the same couple rows over and over, there's some patterns, and maybe it's because of the stitch that you're doing. I am like, I am so over this. This one I'm not over, but <laughs> I can tell you, I've screwed up a few times. So when you do these dips, these V stitches, which are gonna be hard to show. Oh my goodness. Okay, when you do these dips, you do one dip and then you do the second dip. I have, on some rounds, forgot to do the second dip. What did I do? I just did the second dip on the next round and fudged it. I don't think you'll be able to tell. Just let me know. Also, you can see it's all these pearls and then knits, pearls and knits and pearls and knits. There have been, I think, one or two times where instead of moving my yarn from the back to the front or the front to the back, whatever I was doing, I somehow made a yarn over. What did I do? When I got to it, I just knit it with the next stitch or purled it with the next stitch. I wasn't ripping back a row. That wasn't happening. Also, when I, and I know podcasters have talked about this, when I'm doing my switching from my purl to my knit stitches, because or my knit stitches to my purl stitches, because I knit that way, so I am saying the right thing, right? From my knits to my pearls, I get a bigger gap. See that gap? Right there. And it's on every, but it's not at the end. Blocking may fix this. Blocking may not fix this. And I know part of it is when you do your first dip, this one, and then when you do your second one, your second one is in the pattern, she tells you it's a little bit shorter. And so when you go into your first purl stitch, you don't want to pull it too tight because then you'll make that V even shorter on that side. So they won't look as symmetrical. I think my problem is I'm probably not pulling it enough 
because I'm a little nervous about pulling it too tight. I don't know. Although when I do ribbing, I do get a little bit of this, but not quite as much as I'm getting in this. And I know it's probably from being afraid of pulling that stitch too tight. Even though that dip stitch is only done like every five, six rows, I'm still getting it. It's got to be something I'm doing, maybe, with this. I don't know. I like it, though. If I put it on bigger needles, you'd really be able to... Because it comes up a little higher on the neck. And it really does stretch. I don't want to pull it too far because I don't want to pull it off my needles. But there we go. That's how far I am. I'm going to end this video. I'm going to get out there with my family and clean up her playground. And, you know... Uh, goodness, I can't think. Put the new mulch down. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody is practicing social distancing. It's really going to help move this curve down. We need to stop the numbers from duplicating themselves and triplicating sometimes and making that many more cases every day. Just practice the awareness of it all. That's all. That's that's all I got to say. I'm, I talked a lot about it in this episode. And I hope you stuck through. And I hope everybody is just doing, like I said, their own reading and their own whatever they have to do. Because they've warned us, right? They've warned us to do these things. All right, I'm gonna end it there. God, that's another blah note, but that's where we are right now in this state of affairs, I guess. So shove this all back in here, and get outside. Oh, knit happy everybody, see ya.